Mikey. Hi, how are this you? This is uh, the business side of podiatry revenue. So we're going to start talking to Mikey here. And then Mikey is going to uh, share with us um, your experience and how you bring it to this uh, podiatry community. You come with uh, such an important background with accounting mm -hmm. and uh, help the doctors, um, you know, take the business to the next level, know what to do with the money and know mm -hmm. how to better use the money. Can you talk a little bit of your... Uh, how you how you came to where you are oh, and sure. uh, how you help doctors. A little bit of the background, yeah, for sure. Well, thanks thanks for having me. This is really really cool. No, it's really neat setup. Um, a couple of things. So, for years I was in big bank, right? And I'm a CPA and have a master's degree. And I always affectionately say I got my CPA to learn how to put numbers together. Got my MBA to learn how to manipulate them for the benefit of at the time it was the banks. Um, my wife was a standalone practitioner for 20 plus years. Um, and she was getting to a point where she was so large, I was able to step away from large banking and start turning her business into what I'll say, or her practice into what I'll say, a business. Because before, she was running it very much like a practice, very concerned about patient care, which is good, very concerned about having the most up-to-date and current ways to treat issues. Um, but the problem was she started to grow at such a pace where she was spending all of her time as a doctor trying to understand how to work with the financials and how to work with some of what I would consider my expertise. And that can be frustrating for doctors sometimes because they want to be doctors. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's and it's really interesting if you think about it, the way the podiatry education is set up is they are taught to be doctors, which is what they should be. Mm -hmm. Very, very few, if any, that I, that I honestly even know about, teach them how to run their own practice right. or teach them what the financials actually mean. Yeah. Um, I, I have a number of, of doctors that I work with. So now where we are in our phase of, of, of life is we built her practice. We were able to financially set it up and structure it in such a way that I know what bigger businesses are looking for when they look to acquire. Mm -hmm. I know what they're looking for in the event of maybe a larger partnership. Um, and the biggest concern that I had was, well, geez, you're going to get somewhere down the line. What's your foresight for wanting to either stay with a private practice or sell and ultimately get to the, the promised land of retirement or whatever your next chapter is. Right. So um, that discussion, she was very, very in tune with making the practice bigger and better and bigger and better. And we came to a point where it was just a matter of, are we gonna have our own call center? Are we gonna start having additional associates having to come in? Are we, it's huge influx of our own money to make it even bigger than what it was. Um, wasn't a problem, really afforded us a nice lifestyle. But I'll tell you, subsequent to selling it, really affords us a, ni a nice lifestyle. Right. So, um, but a lot of that work was a matter of understanding profit, which obviously you're involved with because all of the collections and the processing yeah. that goes on there. But some of the other yeah. things, like your standard protocols of what you do to collect at the time of service, what you do to follow up for yeah. patient payments, um, those are a big thing. And How you guys you had a very tight practice. I see doctors like... Um, having strong with patient payments mm -hmm. and they don't even know the numbers and you had an operation that you guys collect, you know, all the money that you had to collect from the insurance and from the patient side. I think you had the perfect uh, operation. Well, thanks. That was, um, it, it, it took some time, right? Mm -hmm. It's just like anything. It's, and again, they don't teach podiatrists to come out and know how to collect from patients. Right. They're, you're a doctor and a lot of them come out of the residencies. And it's just patient after patient after patient. And some of them don't even have to learn how to code. Right. Right. So then they, they come into their own practice and all of a sudden, wait, what do you mean I have to collect? What do you mean we have to have somebody that's hired to do this? And one of the other things that I'm seeing really prevalent now is some of these practices, they're doing well. Uh, and most podiatrists do, I think, well, but they all have the you know tiger by the tail. Uh -huh. They think they're making money, but they don't know they're making money. So that's honestly where I've kind of stepped into it with um, the work with our own practice I had to teach the doctors how to think about financials mm -hmm. so it was a matter of saying this is profit this is why it's important this is the seasonality of profit right if you get into the fourth quarter you tend to see a lot more patients why right. is that well deductibles are all met you're a specialist people don't have to pay as much um, now I'm curious like all these valuable knowledge and information do you bring it to the doctors now that you're doing accounting service? I do, I do. It's a good um, question. Unbelievable. Yeah, so it's um, it's it's a real niche for me that I've found a lot of these doctors will work with accountants and the accountants mm -hmm. will say, oh, we're experts in medical. Re really what they mean is they have a portfolio of medical offices. Mm -hmm. um, I work differently 
And my, I think my biggest value that I offer to those doctors is I understand the finance and the accounting. I do my best not to bore the heck out of you with it. Uh -huh. But it's also a matter of affording a lifestyle that you want. So you're spending appropriately within your practice. You're able to enjoy the benefits, believe it or not, of all that hard work as the year goes on versus crossing your fingers and hoping in the next year you don't have a huge tax bill that comes in, for example. Or you're able to expand. Um, if, if you've read Profit First, it's a great mm -hmm. book as well, right? And this, the sentiment there is make sure you pay yourself first. Well, that's that's great, but you're still going to get taxed on what you're paying yourself. So it doesn't doesn't solve all the problems. Um, but I think the, the bigger piece that I offer is, well, I know what a practice looks like. I know how it grows. I know how it falls. I know how it expands. I know where marketing works. I know how the operations work with staff. Uh -huh. um, I negotiated with vendors. Oh, and that's so fantastic. There's, there's a lot. And with, the, with this accounting discussion that I have, it really is the business of medicine. And yeah. you know, right in your case, it'd mm -hmm. be business of podiatry. It's, are you prepared to have these conversations either with your staff? Are you prepared to make decisions about where you're gonna spend? Do you even know how much money you have to spend? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of these doctors will go out, they'll check their bank account and say, geez, I have money, I should pay my bills. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily have to do that because the problem is when you pay your bills, all of a sudden you have nothing in your account. Right. So then it drives more anxiety. They feel like they need to be open more hours. They feel like they need to pay more. I'm not all about cost cutting, I'm about making sense. Yeah. You can have an office open seven days a week if you don't have patients in there seven days a week. Pointless. Yes. So those are um, the conversations I'll have with doctors. The different ways that I offer, I'll, I'll just call them packages, but it, it allows me to have one-on-one -on -one interaction with the owners. Mm -hmm. And so it's things like this. I actually have a structured financial statement that says, here's how much money you made. Here's how much you spent. Here's where you spent. Mm -hmm. Here's where we expect you're going to be at the end of the month. We'll compare it to the last year. And oh, by the way, if we have some administrative things going on, Maybe you're changing AMRs. Maybe you're losing an associate. Maybe you're trying to hire an office manager or someone in the equivalent of an office manager. Those are the types of things where we build every, sometimes every week, if you're a bigger practice, there's a lot more going on. Um, actually, sometimes every week when we start with the smaller practice, just getting off the ground. But for sure, I'm talking at least every two weeks to these doctors over the form of Google Meets. Uh -huh. um, if I can see them in person, sure I will. But oh, that's nice. doctors, they're busy. So yeah. I try to organize around their schedule. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to take away from their families at night. Uh -huh. So quite honestly, a lot of our discussions are over lunch uh -huh. around the administrative hours that doctors will have in their own practice already. Okay, that's awesome. Yeah. And now, um, work with the doctors, what is the problem that uh, they come to you most time? Like it's that selling, is that uh, not having money? What is the problem that uh, most of the time they come to you? Sure, I, I think, well, there's a couple of varieties, right? The first one is um, mostly a startup doctor or a doctor that's about to buy an existing practice. Mm -hmm. So you have two questions. If you're gonna buy an existing practice, what's it worth? Mm -hmm. How do you know what it's worth? I do valuations and that kind of structure as well oh, that's nice. that's to give you a good baseline. Um, if you're starting, there's a lot of things you don't know. And depending on the state that you're in, maybe you have to register with the state, you have to get an LLC, you have to, just these formative uh -huh. things to be legal. Uh -huh. um, so I, I, I definitely would start with those. But the biggest issues that I hear is, wow, oh, there's just so much to know. Yeah. And yeah, there is. So as a doctor, you can do it. There's absolutely you can do it. It's probably going to take you a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. But be a doctor. Let, let the accountant do the accountant stuff and you be the doctor. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say that like the, the, build it up your professional mm -hmm. team of professional if you're trying to figure it out yourself you're gonna get there but you take more time it's gonna take more time yeah. yes yeah, but it's kind of a cheat code surround with uh, great professional with experience and high quality like you you know yeah. like paradox yeah, you know? exactly that will help them get where they want to be uh, faster well and and you know you bring up another point sometimes um whether or not you realize i guess i'm gonna, I'm gonna bend this a little bit with paradox in particular um if you buy a practice and that practice is supposed to be running and you're a new doctor, maybe you're an existing practice trying to expand to a satellite location. They might not have the best billing techniques. They may not understand mm -hmm. what they're doing or how they're working with those insurance claims. Um, you know, a group like Paradox is gonna solve that really quick, right? We've right. had that experience with you. So we know that um, when you have a high quality billing organization, you're going to get high quality results. Right. If you go for the, I'll just say the cheapest one in the bunch, you, you might get good results. Yeah. But there's a pretty big chance you're not going to get the results you think. Yeah. Um, I think the other thing is, even if it's not just a startup or an acquisition, the other thing that I look for uh, in practices is they always say, well, I'm not sure how much I'm making. Or I don't think I'm making enough as doctors, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. 
Um, so if you have an owner practice, you tend to take distributions. Well, I will say I have some very legal techniques on how you should be taking salaries mm -hmm. and how you should make sure that you're taking more of that money home. You're right. And maybe you're getting hit with payroll taxes much lower than what you would be getting hit on income taxes. Right. All expenses against your business, so it also reduces the profitability of your business. Right. Um, and then for sure the other thing is because of the experience we had with growing our practice so quickly and effectively, if a large practice is out there and they want to get bigger, I know the techniques to get bigger. Mm -hmm. So those are conversations as well for the existing large practices. Once they go, a lot of them would like to go to sell eventually. That's their exit strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so the other questions I get is, should I hire an associate that's eventually going to be a partner? Mm -hmm. Or should I just sell outright to a big regional medical firm or a VC? It depends. Um, I think it's harder to come by associates that want to buy into a practice versus work for a big medical group. Uh -huh. um, one, because they're just not wired that way coming out of podiatry school. Right. And two, I, I honestly think these owners are really smart and they understand what it takes. Uh -huh. And they're willing to put that time in to afford the lifestyles they have. So why share the secret? So it's, you know, it's a little bit of that. So it's um, a, a fear of the great unknown by the new generation that might come in as owners. So what I'll do is I'll prep these organizations that have been in practice for a while for sale. Uh -huh. we'll, we'll fix their financial statements in such a way that the categories of where they're making money and spending money translates very easy to a negotiation number fantastic. when you're talking to the big organizations. That's so fantastic. Yeah. What is your ideal uh, client? Which, uh -huh. which is the client that is ideal to um, the Irish accountant? The Irish accountants, yeah. Well, I, would, I would took a little criticism from Ram on the on the name Irish accountant. He's like, it has nothing to do with podiatry. I was like, but everybody remembers it, so that's yes. that's why. Um, I, my ideal client, for sure, for sure, is a podiatry office, right? Um, I don't dabble in other medical offices, mostly because I don't know the other medical office. I will help them as far as financial structure is concerned, but I don't have the the same insight mm -hmm. of growth and some of the challenges they have. Operationally, yes, but financially, there's different things. Okay. Um, so my ideal is definitely a podiatry practice, definitely um, an owned practice that is looking more for their perspective on, I'm really stressed out, I'm not sure why I'm stressed out, but I don't know my numbers. Mm -hmm. Those are the conversations that I'll have and I'll be like, okay, I can help you pretty quickly. So the biggest thing and most response that I get from every practice that I've worked with is, oh my gosh, this is so simple. Yeah. Instead of, hey, let me hand you a QuickBooks financial statement. Boy, these numbers are really good or really bad. Well, what does that mean? Exactly. I give you the numbers and I tell you, here's what they mean. I don't give you a QuickBooks financial statement. So um, I think the doctors that are willing to learn and your good practices that are a little bit stressed out, they know they're making money, they're not quite sure how they can make more. Mm -hmm. It could be a matter of, of cost cutting, yeah, yeah. but I find out it's, it's, it's really not. It's just organizing, well, how can I spend my money more effectively? Right. And then that really promotes their growth. So those those are kind of the ways I look to see who I want my clients to be. Uh -huh. um, if I have someone that says, oh, geez, save me, I'll have a conversation with them and see really where they are, <laughs> do an assessment. Um, and it's, you know, there, there are scenarios where, I, where I've told practices, you don't, you don't need me. You need somebody that can market you better. Um, so I do those assessments as well. I don't necessarily take everybody on. What I do find out is when I tell people, oh, you need a marketer, or you need a better EMR, or you need a better biller or something like that, they'll be like, yeah, but now we want you to. So you know, it, <laughs> yes. it, it all works. It's, it's, yeah, it's a I good relationship. You're great access because it is very, uh, you're unique, you know, these uh, service like you, an account like so unique like you, yeah, yeah. Um, it's hard on that industry, any medical industry, you know, and uh, I'm so glad that you came up with it. I remember talking to you years ago when Paradox started work with uh, Pretty Pet, yeah. and you, had to you told me about this plan yeah, that you had, yeah. and I'm so uh, glad you, you know, came to life and you're helping us. How, how people can find you? Um, well, it's it's pretty easy, I think, right? There's the phone number that you could use, um, but my, my email um, and website is the Irish Accountant. Okay, the Irish Accountant. Right, uh, dot com, and then it's Mike at the Irish Accountant dot com. Okay, Mike. Um, so all that information is there. Uh, it's it's relatively straightforward. Um, there's a way to schedule appointments or send me like chat messages off of that website. Um, and I tend to 
kind of haunt the AAPPM conferences and some of the other traditional conferences, um, as well as have, as you can imagine, a handful of referrals of, yes. of some pretty happy practices. So, so nice talking to you. Thank you for you know be uh, here with me today oh, and nice. share Thank a little so bit much. of your you know background and how you help doctors. Great, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. We are looking forward to our next episode. Your questions and comments fuel our discussions. So keep them coming. Don't miss out on the last updates. Hit the subscribe button and stay connected with us on this journey of success. Thank you.